Hello, this is Congressional Update with Michael Capuano. I'm Sarah Fishman. Hello, Mike. How are you? Wonderful, Sarah. How are you? I'm a bit perturbed by all the political brouhaha's about <laughs> us, um, the presidential election. We're going to talk almost only about that. So I just want to acknowledge that there are a lot of bad things going on in other parts of the world, hurricanes, ceasefires ceasing, things like that. We recognize all that. However, this is October 13th. It's the last of these shows before the presidential election. So, Mike, what is your take on the current state of the presidential <laughs> election? Um, it is, for me, the most disturbing election I've ever seen, and it's amazing. I, I, I think if you had run this campaign on a TV show a year ago, or two years ago, no one would have believed it possible that it would have been a miserable failure. Because that, nobody would ever say those things, no one would ever do those things, so of course, that's crazy. The fact that we are living through this as a presidential campaign, I'm like everybody else, I'm just stunned. I mean, I, I understand, I actually embrace the argument about ideas, you know, mm -hmm. right, left, Democrat, Republican. I, that's what elections are supposed to be about. What we're into now is, I don't know what it is. You can still register to vote until October 19th. Um, early voting is occurring from October 24th until November 4th. All of this is on the city website. And election day, the polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So again, that's all on the city website, but just so people know, there's still time. Anyways, um, so did you watch the second debate? Sure. Okay. And do you think, um, to quote Michelle Obama, people went high instead of low? Did both candidates? Did neither candidate? Did anybody? <laughs> I just think that, you know, one candidate is dragging this campaign down. I mean, yeah, you know, look. No one is going to say that Hillary Clinton is the greatest candidate in the history of the universe. I mean, maybe some would say it, not the average person, and nobody's looking for that. Most of us are adults. Most of us know that when you get a chance to vote for president, you're lucky if you vote for somebody you like. Um, but more often than not, you vote for somebody that you like a little bit more than the other guy. That's the choices you have. And, and the turnout is always pretty good for a presidential election. Mm -hmm. It will be, I think, particularly good this time. Um, Do you think it'll be higher for Republicans or for Democrats? No, I think I think everybody will be showing up. Okay. I, mean, I, I think some people will be motivated one way, but a lot of people will be motivated the other way. Um, you know, the, so that being the case, I mean, I, I think that when you, it should be an argument about ideas. Right. And, and you know, again, it's okay to disagree. It's okay not to say something. But one candidate's giving you ideas, whether you like them or not, is fine. Mm -hmm. But the other candidate's not, and. All they're doing, the only idea that I've heard them say thus far is they want to build a wall. And that's all well and good. That's maybe good, bad, or indifferent. It's, I'll take it for what it is. It's a. So, it's what a, I don't understand, and maybe you can put this in some historical context. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, since I've been voting, I'm 51, <laughs> so however long that is, I can't remember anything like this. No, but you'll in, never see anything like but this. But, like in other times, what one not still this call the modern Not this kind era, of stuff. What, no, and, and I, look, uh, Somerville's not doesn't have difficult elections now, but it had had a long history of difficult and nasty elections. Uh, I was engaged in some of them, and, but even then, there were arguments about ideas. I mean, there was some of the personal stuff. It's always going to come out, you know, somebody saying something about somebody in your family. But I believe it wasn't, some people called you a bully. Yeah, well, people call me all kinds of names over the years. And that that's was the fine. only one I saw in print. Yeah, and they, you know, they. There have been more than that, but yes. that's, you know, that's beside yes. the point. They're always a part of a campaign. Right. I get that. But they're not the campaign, and that's the difference here. It's, look, it's not unusual for somebody to think that you know, Hillary's a crook or Trump is stupid or whatever it is they want to say. Fine. The problem I see is that those seem to be the only things yeah. that the campaign's about. So this and is it's just, that's, that's just... That's not what it's supposed to be. Yeah, and this is what I don't get, and I do not want to get into the content of anything nasty that has been said because I don't want to give it its due. But I, I don't understand why things keep being said that are so self-defeating, so self-incriminating. I don't get it because what it does is it obscures one's ability to be critical in the neutral sense of anything that Hillary does I, offer. I, I don't get it. 
I don't know. I, I will leave that to the sociologist to rip apart after this election if, or the psychologist to figure out what's going on. Um, but does it say something about Americans and are they, are there, is there some group of Americans that is just so upset with their lot in sure, life, their absolutely. economic but that's, situation? But that's not new. Right, Th so that's then what not is new. making it different this and, time? And it's not new that that is part of the campaign. That's not the problem. That, so what's to me, the problem? The problem is that the solutions are, I'm going to call the other people names and I'm going to you know, be nasty about it. And, and not because that, but that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to say, you know, yeah, you're stupid and you're ugly, and by the way, here are the three positive things I'm going to do. They're going to say, you're stupid, you're ugly, and that's it. And well, like, that's, come on. Trump has said a couple of other things. And see, this is what I don't get wall. because the self... The, the self-incriminating comments totally take us away from anything substantive. So, for instance, let's just try to be a little substantive for a second. Good they luck. each have, yeah, I'll try. Um, they'll, they each have uh, a tax plan. And Trump is always talking about how the size of the debt is huge. You cannot get me three people in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts who are familiar with the tax plans from either one of these candidates. And that's the problem. The campaign has been dominated by non substantive No, I know, issues. I know. Well, hopefully I'm half of one person at least because I'm saying <laughs> that Trump's plan would decrease revenu revenue by $6.2 trillion. I'm looking at my notes. Hillary's plan would increase revenue, federal revenue, by $1.4 trillion. And if he's talking about the debt being so high and he's proposing tax proposals that would only further increase the debt, then, okay, so let's not even get to whether or not the things he says are horrible or yucky or misogynistic or whatever. You know, does that make sense? Well, the, but the answer is no, but I, I would like the campaign to be on this. Yeah. And because I would argue, and not me, but I would imagine that they would argue, well, it's trickle-down economy. Once we cut the taxes, revenues will flow because business will... They've, we've heard that before. Obviously, I don't agree with it. Right. But it's at least a positive argument in favor of what I would consider to be a wrong plan and, and an inappropriate conclusion. But it's in the norm of what we're, we should... It's content-based. It's content-based. That's yeah. a very good way to put it. It's... But we can't get there on anything. So, so is this only going to get worse over the next... I fear that it might. And I just, I mean, I, I obviously I talk to everybody I talk to has some political thing they want to comment about, and that's fine. Everybody is basically saying, I want this election over. I want this election over. I want to go back to automobile ads. Do you know who Anna Navarro is? Uh, yes, I do. So she's a, uh, a Republican political strategist. Yep. And she, she said... Maybe what we all need to do is just take a pill, <laughs> just take a chill pill, you know, and she's not even coming at this from... But, you know, that, that, that's all well and good, Yeah. except... I'm just saying that that's I consider with... myself pretty experienced in campaigns and pretty tough-skinned. I mean, you know, you, you don't get involved in some of the politics, uh, like what I did, and not be tough-skinned. So this stuff doesn't theoretically or technically bother me. But I have to be honest, this is one that I feel the same way. It's like, this is enough. I, it, it, that's just too much. We're not, I don't see that we're going to get to substantive detail. We have another debate coming... Wednesday the 19th. Wednesday the 19th. Right. Uh, obviously, I'll be watching it, and I pray to God we'll be able to. I have my doubts whether that will be All right, possible. so let's, let's try to shift a little bit. Because I actually think Hillary will do better if she gets to talk about ideas and substance than about this kind of stuff. This kind of stuff just turns everybody off. Yeah. Although it, it, it doesn't at least do her a big disservice because it f focuses in on itself. So it's not, well, in fact, this is know. one of the things I want to talk about. Joan Venocci wrote a column in The Globe today about how all the, the negative stuff is obscuring whether or not we should be more critical of things in her past, so like the email server stuff, and was there a conflict of interest with the Clinton Foundation? So let's take those one at a time. So apparently there were like 100 people at the FBI working on whether or not she mishandled classified information. It's an important issue. A, a, it's a, a serious private, item. Yeah, and I have these friends who are like gonzo liberals, and they are up in arms. You know, They're like, we have to keep track of every single little email, and we can't do this, and we can't do that. Be and, and here she's allowed to blah, 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 you know. So, no. Is it's it's a fair issue. I mean, yeah. I have, I'm not defending it. Um, at the same time, it, it, as far as I know, the issue has been completely vetted by both the FBI and the Congress of the United Let's, States, uh, and and it doesn't mean that it's not a legitimate issue. And it, if we could get to that, it would make partisans like me maybe a little uncomfortable. 
But my answer is, look, if she did anything wrong, I think America has deser deserves to know it. Thus far, based on all the information, and again, this is not just lied there un right. unattended. Thus far, the, look, she shouldn't have had a private server. We all agree with that. She has agreed with that. She's apologized. She said she made a mistake. Yeah, she yeah. made a mistake, and she did. Okay. If that's the criteria that you're going to vote on a campaign, you've made your decision. It is one of the many factors. It is not a positive factor in her in her column. Right. Um, but I don't think it's dispositive. I don't think it's the final issue that says, okay, I'm never going to vote for her. It's like, okay, I agree. She made a mistake. She shouldn't have done it. And that's bad. What else? And mm -hmm. it's the what else that outweighs well, that one bad so thing. So there, there are multiple levels of things that could have been done. She could have been prosecuted. Some people said she should just have had her security clearance yanked. I mean, do, do you have any sense of, do you think I, I none of that should have happened? Do you I, think I, it's well, we didn't find out about it until after the facts, or yeah. security clearance is already technically yanked, for the lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and number one. Number two, you know, I don't think it's a criminal activity. Um, my hope and my expectation is, it is the next. Is it more like look, negligence? It, was, it was a bad decision. Yeah. You know, period. I mean, kind of, you know, people make mistakes, and you know, there are some criminal activities that you should be held accountable. This is not one of them that I see. Okay. Um, this is a bad mistake that was that was made in an administrative issue. To my knowledge, no laws were broken, mm -hmm. um, and there has been no allegations by a neutral party that right. laws have been broken. And that being the case, fine. I hope and presume that when she becomes president, and I don't say if anymore, kind of when, I, I hope you think she's she will come up with win? policies. I, I, think, I think she's going to win. I think she should come up with written policies for the administration so it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And I, people say, oh, that's too late. They're pulling the line. We all learn from our mistakes. Anybody has never, never made a mistake, good for them. I have, and when you learn from a mistake, you say, shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. I don't know why I did it. I did it. I won't do it again. And I, I think that's in this category from based on what has been found by neutral people, not okay. by the partisans. All right, so I want to take the Clinton Foundation next. So in this case, the accusation is that there was public corruption, yeah. there was conflict of interest between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department when she was Secretary of right. State. And the example one person gives, at least, is of this Lebanese-Nigerian businessman. You know about him? Not who much. Someone from the Clinton Foundation said, oh, we have to make sure he gets to talk to the substance person at yeah. State about whatever. So I, I again, without knowing the details, I mean, as long as it, who do you help in life? You help your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, that's human nature. It happens all the time. Um, and for me, it, in the public in public life, you're always going to be questioned about that. The question is, did you say if you give a donation, I will do this? Right. That's illegal. Right. Pay if play. you say give me a donation, fine, and then a week later they call for something else, you say, okay, let me see what I can do to help you. That is not illegal. I don't even think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, otherwise, I, mean, I know that some people want to believe this. Every politician in the world, what am I supposed to do? Never take a phone call, never help anybody who donated $5 to me or $500 or $5,000 to me? And the answer is, I'm going to help them. I'm, I'm not going to break any laws. I'm not going to say, give me $5, and therefore I will then do something for you. Uh, and uh, it, I, I'll give you an example. When I first got in office, 1977, I had a... a Were you a, alderman? I was an alderman. Yeah. Uh, I had a constituent who, uh, who needed a uh, handicapped parking, and he was legitimately handicapped. We got him a handicapped parking sign for the front of his house, and he came up to City Hall and gave me $50. I said, well, what's this for? He said, well, I said, no, no, no. Yeah, look, I, he didn't. He wasn't insulting me. He thought that's the way business was done. I said, "Look, you needed it. You got it." Now, don't get me wrong. The time will come when I have a campaign that I may call you, and if you can help me, then please do. But don't do it because right. you know, I get you this. I did it because do it because this is how I service my constituents, and this is the kind of government well, you want to have. It sounded like that was just what it should have been. That's yeah. yeah. But again, should I? Should he, if he had given me the fifty dollars first, and I got him the legitimate handicap sign, is that play to pay? I don't that pay to play. I don't think so. It doesn't look good, at least. Well, it, uh, it, if but someone gives you money and then you then you do something in reverse, that's like some services being purchased. But it, 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 no, it's not. It depends on the motivation. If the motivation is I did it because you gave me money, that's wrong. If the motivation is I'm doing it anyway, and you just happened to give me money this week. That I've reported, you know, it's not under the table cash. Yeah. Not, that's not what I'm yeah. talking about. Okay. Uh, and I don't mean that. I mean, the same thing with the charitable thing. If you're raising money for charity, which you know, a lot of people have done, do you then never help anyone who has given money to that charity? It's ridiculous. Again, if you say, 
if you give money to the charity, I will then do something for you. That is illegal. Now, if that's what she did, that is illegal. There's been no proof of that, yeah. to my knowledge. Now, in this particular case, I believe he, the individual in question was talking about outcome of elections in Lebanon. So it wasn't that there was a specific State Department action or position that was taken or not taken as a result of any interaction. So, so yes. But some of these things, even if they aren't bad, they just well, don't. In, in public feel life, everything good, can potentially kind of, look bad. That's the difference yeah. in public life and private life. You have, do you have any doubt whatsoever that Donald Trump or any rich person has donated money to a charity because the person who asked was somebody they're doing business with? It happens every day for every charity you know. And nobody questions it. Why? Because it's in private life. Mm. You know, if it's a public life, and, and don't worry, I'm not saying it shouldn't be questioned. If that's why you're doing it, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, how, which is first, the chicken or the egg? And it's almost impossible to answer that question. It's almost impossible Without to know the question. Without getting egg on your face. Well, you can't, you can't know what's in people's hearts unless they make it obvious. And when they do, if somebody came in and said, Mike, I want you to do something for me, and I say yes, if whatever it might be, get a meeting for you or, or help you get a visa, or whatever, a thousand things we do every single day. And then they say, because you did that, I want to give you a donation. My answer has always been, thank you, appreciate right. the thought, but no. Okay, so let's, let's forgive me, get off you, and go back to Mr. Trump and Ms. Clinton. Well, it's just easy to kick the Clintons. Everybody in public life does the same thing. Okay, all right, duly noted, in your opinion. So, um, no, in my knowledge. Okay, <laughs> okay, so. Without exception, without exception. Got it. Um, so then, does it surprise you perhaps not, <clears throat> excuse me, that Trump took this huge deduction or whatever it was for, what was it, like uh, close to a million dollars? Yeah, billion. Uh, billion for... The answer is who knows. I mean, I, I, obviously without seeing his tax return, you wouldn't know whether it's legal so or it not. So it meant that he, he effectively didn't pay, probably didn't pay income yeah, actually, tax over to me, like 18 years? That's a tempest years. in a teapot. It, on Why the is it a tempest? Because Again, there's no way to tell based on what we have. I mean, it raises, again, serious questions. Well, he said at the second debate that, sure, I do. That was his well, answer. Well, that's, and he should. Yeah. Uh, look, everybody should take every deduction, every credit, every exemption they're entitled to. And everybody does. I don't know anybody. And you know I used to be a tax attorney. You know my wife is a CPA. I have never met anybody who has ever said on any deduction, credit, or exemption, no, I don't want to take it. Now, does that make the exemption, deduction of credit the right thing to do by right. government? No, that makes it Congress's fault if we allow that kind of stuff. But, and I'm not saying that's what Trump did. There's no way to tell. He might have taken a deduction or an exemption or credit that he wasn't entitled to. That's a different story. And there's that's from, not necessarily what this is saying, though, I, right? I understand that. But yeah. the fact that he did it, I don't think reflects on him. I think it reflects on the system. So when he says that it makes him smart that he didn't pay any personal income tax because it doesn't paid make up. him smart. It makes it makes Congress a little stupid for allowing loopholes that big. Oh, I see. Okay, that's an interesting way of putting it. Well, so I mean, then, I, I, well, everybody I know, again, you know, Somerville has a lot of people that pay people money to do their taxes. And I don't care if it's H and R Block or the biggest right. accounting firm in the world. None of them, not one of them, has ever said and come in. Oh, I have you a shouldn't legitimate take to, this that you're entitled to. Or right. not only is it, the taxpayer has never said, I know you tell me I'm entitled to this deduction, please don't take it. Yeah. Everybody does. Yeah. Now, that doesn't make, you know, I could argue that a lot of those deductions are wrong. I'd love to rewrite the tax system. But once the system is there, if it's legal, and I, the part is I don't know, no one can tell whether Trump's deduction was legal or proper. That, who knows? Yeah. That's, we don't know until we see a tax return. So. Let's go back to tax policy and try to be a little more. You're defending based. Donald Trump. That's terrible. Well, <laughs> I, I I can't be accused of being too partisan. No. Um, what was I? Well, look, say? I'm never going to vote for him, but I want to not vote for him on the right reasons. <laughs> so, what are the right reasons? Because he'd be terrible for this country in a thousand different ways. Uh, name not, name the top two or three in your mind. Uh, uh, war and peace. Yeah. Uh, tax and economic equity. <laughs> those are the top two that we need. I don't think I don't get much past those. Okay. Oh, so by then the way, human dignity on a thousand different levels. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good one. I would put that first, personally. Okay. But um, <laughs> war and peace so on the tax on the tax stuff. So his plan would lower the tax rate significantly. <laughs> for rich people. It would grant certain breaks to corporations. Hillary's plan wouldn't do that. 
So I'm not even sure what my point is here because I, I think I know what you think. But is there anything that can be said here? Or I have not looked at either of their tax plans, if you want the truth, because that is not... I've already kind of made my decision on other bases. Okay. And because neither one of them get elected emperor, they'll have to come to Congress to get any tax plan changed. So okay. for me, that's more important. Okay. All right. So let's shift back to something else, which is some people who supported Trump are no longer supporting him. Some people who have supported him and then didn't support him are now re-sort of supporting him. <laughs> some people are supporting him but not endorsing him. So. It's very confusing. There's actually a cheat sheet that, I don't know if it was someone on Political or somewhere <laughs> else, that they, they went through each sort of like high profile Republican and what they are or are not saying about There's Trump. a small part of me that feels bad for some of them, but not, not So are there, much. do you have any colleagues in the House who are Republicans, who are Trump supporters, who you discourse with on any sort of deep level about this? Do you have a sense of why they support? Are they, is there a real split that is occurring? Oh God, yeah. It's been happening from day one. I mean, most of them have wanted nothing to do with Trump right from the get-go. Um, there are some who do support him and some support him right from the Any from the friends start. of yours though? Anyone who uh, you? None of the Republicans that I would consider to be my friends. Your close, I want to be careful. Close, I shouldn't say none. Close I mean, I, colleagues. None that I'm aware of, okay. none that come to my mind, uh, have supported him. Or if they have supported him, they've supported him only in the check the box. Yeah, yeah, I'm with him. Now leave me alone. <laughs> um, there might be exceptions to that, but none that I can think of. Okay. So then there is a real split. Presumably, this has made things worse. <laughs> right. So is what do you think is going to happen? I mean, is there a I chance? I think he's going to lose. <laughs> Right, but what's going to happen with Congress? Is there going to be a down ticket, as they that call I don't it, know. effect? I, I don't know that answer. I mean, I, I, I've always been skeptical of any coattail issues anyway. I mean, I don't think... But in this case, if the Republican Party is not giving Trump money, is not giving him support, is not doing this, and is shifting... I don't, I don't think the party is all that important. Either party affiliation. I don't know anybody who votes the way they vote because the party told them to do it. No, but what I mean is if resources are placed differently... It won't be resources. Okay. I don't think it will be. Maybe it will, but I don't think so. Um, look, I, I, I don't think the parties are... I don't know what they ever were, but they're certainly not that powerful in themselves anymore uh, that I know of anywhere. The difference is in some states not here in Massachusetts, you can vote for the entire party slate. So you can put one check or pull one lever and you voted for all Democrats. Uh, I don't even have a clue how many states allow that anymore. Um, Massachusetts has it, I'm not sure ever, but not in my lifetime. Uh, and that's kind of where it matters. So if you have, in those states, it might matter because uh, people who might do that might now not do that's that. That's a really good point. And it's so different in so many of these states. Yeah, I don't think it matters much in most states don't have that. Some do, most do not. And because most do not, I think people, the average person, especially in a presidential election, is perfectly capable and willing of splitting the ticket. Yeah, yeah. So House versus Senate. Is either one... The Senate is in serious play. I mean, uh, most people think the Democrats can. Have, they have a very good chance of picking up the Senate. So we have 54 Republicans, 44 yeah. Democrats, two independents who uh, vote with the Democratic well, yeah. caucus. So 54, 46 right yeah. now. Um, the, likely, the odds makers are now saying the Democrats are going to pick up the Senate. But let's be clear. If they pick it up with 50 or 51 seats, now 50 because then the vice president right. hopefully will be... Uh, Tim Kaine, but if they pick it up with 50 or 51 seats, it changes the dynamic, it changes the tenor, it changes the the agenda. It doesn't necessarily change the outcome. Right. Because in the Senate, they have a rule that the simple majority is not enough on many things. Right. Uh, in the House, a simple majority is enough to do everything. If you can get 218 votes, so it doesn't So you think matter. it's more likely that the Senate would turn over than the yes, House would? Yes, I think so. This, the House, we, we, we need uh, 30 seats to pick up. Some of those seats are in deep, deep, deep Republican areas. Mm -hmm. We will never be able to pick them up. Uh, but there are, we will pick up more seats today than we would have, than most people thought we would have two or three, four months ago. Okay, and what about a recount? Do you think that there's any Presidential? chance I pray that? not. <laughs> I hope not. So all this stuff, I mean, it seems like there are so many differences from state to state that some states you get an automatic recount if there's Within a certain 1%. margin of victory that's a certain percentage yeah. or less than whatever. So, but that's not the case everywhere. Some places 
things are counted by machine, by hand. I don't, New think, Hampshire, anybody, I don't think there's anybody who does it by hand anymore. New Hampshire, think. at least as of 2012, only did recounts by hand. Oh, recounts. Yes. Okay, rec I think yeah. recounts get done by hand, yes. Yeah. So, but there are all these... Recounts should be done by hand. Well, but in some cases, in Colorado, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, it's hard to do that throughout the state because in some places there isn't a paper that that's, gets spit. Hence the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's horrendous. But I least, think, And that, again, this is all of 2012. I don't know. one of the reasons changed. I voted against the bill after the Florida debacle. Yeah. There was a bill to help a lot of states. I voted against it because it didn't require states to go to a paper ballot that can be optically read. It allowed them to continue to go no ballot, you know, no paper ballot. It's like, no, no, no. That's going to cause more problems. It won't solve the problem. Right. You know, so, and that's exactly what happened. We spent tens of millions or billions, I don't know how much we spent, helping different states upgrade their system, and they upgraded them to systems that are not very good. It's just, it's just stunning how different it is from, from one place to another. Okay, so let's see. What else do we want to talk about here? Can we quickly talk... I'm going to dare to go out of the Trump Clinton uh, arena here and ask you. Uh, it's been worked over pretty good. Uh, briefly about the ballot questions. Mm -hmm. So there are five ballot questions. Do you have a favorite or a least <laughs> favorite? Or uh, okay, so no. question one is more slot machines. Question two, more charter schools. Question three, different standards for farm animals. Different. Uh, question four, legalized marijuana. And five, just in Somerville, a bond for a new high school building. So do you have a favorite there you want to discuss first, or should I direct the discussion? You can go ahead and go Okay. Ahead. So, well, then I'll just start at the top. So what do you think about more um, slot machine parlors? Not a big deal to me. I will probably vote no, but if it passes, I'm not going to lose any sleep. I don't okay. think I'll lose any sleep on any of these, but that's a different issue. All right. Charter school expansion? I will vote no on that, uh, not because I don't like charter schools, but because I don't like the way the funding mechanism works in Massachusetts. I think it is uh, unfair to the vast majority of children. Okay. And conditions for farm animals? I will vote to free the chickens. <laughs> Let it be duly noted. Okay. Um, legalization, regulation, and taxing of marijuana. I will vote yes, but I, I have personal, strong personal caveats. I have expressed it publicly and privately to the proponents and opponents that if it passes, um, my real hope is that immediately the legislature gets to work dealing with a couple of issues. The ones that I'm aware of are edibles. They mm -hmm. really should that, deal, they need to deal with edibles. This me. bill does not do that. Uh, they need to deal with what is a legal limit with, with it, above which you cannot operate an automobile or a vehicle of some sort uh, and a way to measure that. Um, those are the things, and, and there's something that there's some issues about how much you can grow and all, and all that kind of thing. I think it's those up are to legit. six plants. Yeah, I don't remember the details, but I, and I and I say this because people tend to forget. They think that once these things pass, they're sacrosanct. They're not. They're just a law that can be amended. And by the way, the law, the most important law that was passed in my memory at the ballot box was Proposition Two and a Half. It kind of got all these proposition things started. The bill that passed, we immediately went to work with the proponents, Barbara Anderson on one side, Jim Browdy on the other side, the opponent, and we worked together to change that law dramatically from what was written. Now, the, the result accomplished what the proponents said it would accomplish when they, when they ran the ballot, because the, the bill they had didn't do that. And we addressed a lot hmm. of problems, and the bill worked. And that's why Barbara Anderson and I became friends over the years, even though we disagreed on the issue, um, because, hey, you won the question. Let's, now let's make it work. In this case, uh, I am a libertarian when it comes to these things. I don't really, I don't think the government should participate in knowing what you're doing in the privacy of your own home or lecturing you. However, I don't want you, you know, smoking a joint or two or three or ten and then going and driving a car. Okay. Uh, We're about out of time, so I have to quickly ask you. You mentioned Prop 2.5. So what about a uh, $136 million bond for the high school? I will probably vote yes, but... Uh, my hope is that the people that don't even know where the high school is will pass that question on. Um, I am not gung-ho happy that this is on a presidential ballot. Uh -huh. uh, this is a local matter. I personally went to the high school. My kids went to the high school. I would think it's a great idea to get a new high school. Um, but it should be decided by the people who really pay attention to local issues, not the ones who just show up every four years for a presidential election. All righty. So, you heard it here. This has been Congressional Update with Michael Capuano. Have a nice day.